Hi there everybody, Ollie here, aka Secret Nimbus, here with another Magic 2014 Let's Play video. So at the end of the last episode, I had taken on the Ninja Rats and the Hid Hidetsugu's Wrath, which is kind of like, it was a one creature slash burn deck. And now, I'm onto the third, of, third encounter of the Kamigawa plane, which is the Ninja Gang. So uh, I've got this and two un uh, deck unlocked encounters to go. So I'm going to try and do this one, this uh, this video. Maybe go on to Sword of the Samurai, depending how long I take. So uh, let's see what the blurb says. So proving yourself against Hidetsugu has led Ancient Oni to reward you with the location of a scale from the legendary spirit, spirit dragon Yossi. The bad news is the prized possession of a powerful Diamo. It, it, sorry, my bad. The, ba the bad news is it's the prized possession of a power di powerful Diamo, a feudal samurai lord. Hmm, interesting. So, uh, looks like I've got to go up against a samurai lord at some point, but in the way, we've got a ninja gang. So, uh, conveniently, it's actually landed on my Hunter Strength deck, which is the deck that I want to use in this video. So, uh, we're going to jump right in and see how we get on. So, we've got three lands, a Garak's Companion, not bad start, Rampaging Balos, good later game one, got an Overrun, pretty cool card as well, got Nature's Law, so a ramp card. So, I reckon I can get at least four land out here pretty quickly, so not too bad, so I think I'm going to keep that hand. Obviously, I won't be able to play anything on my first turn, but that's not really the end of the world. So, we'll see what's the Ninja Gang going to play then. I'm expecting, ooh, it's a black, it's got black in it. Interesting. Wasn't expecting that. And then what's this then? Tormented Soul. Tormented Soul can't block and can't be blocked. Interesting. So it's almost a guaranteed one hit. So how do I take that out? Must, the only way I'm going to be able to take that one out is with like a, one of my fight cards. If I, Ooh, another land. Excellent. So exactly what I need. So I can actually play my Garak's Companion now. Won't be able to block that one, unfortunately. So I'm going to have to take uh, one point of damage straight away. But uh, not the end of the world. It's only one hit point. He can defeat me in a whole 20 turns. So I've got a black blue deck. Interesting. Burn, uh, sort of uh, kill cards and, and uh, counters. I'm expecting, kind of. Is that a zombie card? No, it's a spirit card. What's this then? Skull Snatcher. Ninjutsu. Whenever Skull Snatcher deals combat damage uh, to a player, exile up to two target cards from that player's, player's graveyard. Fair enough. Interesting card. Was it 2 1? Fair enough. What have I got now? Ooh, Clonian Tusker. That's exactly what I need. So do I play Nature's Law first? Now I'm gonna play my I'm gonna swing in with my Garrick's Garrick's companion. Actually no. Do I? Don't I? No, because if I swing in, I'm gonna Yeah, I'm gonna swing in because I basically wanna take out that one because that's What what is, what did what Ninjutsu do again? It, no, no, there's ninjutsu. After one of your creatures attacks and your opponent doesn't block it, you can reveal a card with ninjutsu from your hand. Pay its ninjutsu cost and return your unblocked creature to its owner's hand. Then you put... Hmm. Interesting. I wonder if you decide to play his ninjutsu cost on that one. Oh, he's going to block with it. No, never mind. So I, I do lose my Garrick's Companion. I will actually do two lots of trample damage. Pretty cool. And then I can actually summon my Colonian Tusker to replace it. So uh, a 3-3 three, three card. Went, obviously won't be able to block that card, but I do do two damage to the ninja gang, so I feel as that was uh, that was worth it. Now what's uh, so he's going to swing in with that one? I'm going to have to take another point of damage. Oh, let me know. Was that a ninjutsu cost? Yeah, ninjutsu. Ah, whenever 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 ninja of the deep hours deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card. Hmm. So I couldn't actually block that one because he basically swapped it out for his ninjutsu card. So uh, the ninja gang gets to draw a card. What's this then? Another Tormented Soul? Interesting. So let me, let, me, let me do this. So after one of your creatures attacks and your opponent... Ah, right. You can reveal a card with ninjutsu from your hand. Play its ninjutsu cost and return your unblocked creature to its owner's hand. Ah, I finally get it. So this one is a really good card for like this ninjutsu thing because if I don't block that particular card, then he can then swap it out for a ninjutsu card and then return that one to his hand and keep doing it, which is pretty crazy, actually. So I'm going to play another Colonian Tusker. Use my Nature's Law to get another land down. Here we go. Confirm. It's another land. Now I can swing him with this bad boy. I've still got a blocker to block that uh, particular ninja card. He obviously can't block with that one, as it's un it's uh, unblockable but can't block either. So I get uh, a 3-3 three, three to swing him with and a 3-3 three, three to defend this turn. Pretty cool, pretty cool. How many lands have I got now? One, two, three, four, five. So I can't quite summon my Rampaging Balofs, unfortunately. That's pretty cool. So whenever I get another... I like the land for one on this one, so whenever so whenever I um, play a land, I get a 4-4 four, four card down. So what's the Ninja Gang going to do then? Going to swing in, or... So what's this then? Blinding Power. Equipped creature has unattached blinding power. Oh, sorry. 
quick creature has un unattached blind blinding powder prevent all combat damage that would be dealt to this creature this turn fair enough so i'm guessing it's gonna give it to its ninja one. Oh no it's gonna keep it there it's probably gonna swing in and then i'm gonna block with that one then it'll probably use its powder thing maybe i don't know depends depends if they decide to swing in this uh it, the computer's taking its time so it looks like is it swinging in maybe maybe not i don't know seems kind of i think i've confused the computer with like two colonial tuskers down all oh, right so let me guess ninjutsu maybe Yes, what well, how did I guess? A ninjutsu card. So whenever Mistblade Shinobi deals combat damage to a player, you may return target creature that player controls to it. Whenever Mistblade Shinobi deals combat damage to a player, you may return target creature that player controls to its owner's hand. Oh, so it looks like I'm about to have one of my cards returned to my hand. That one. Why did you return my... Never mind. <laughs> I, don't, I don't suppose it really mattered which one he returned. And he gets to play another Tormented Soul, and basically just gets to keep playing... Uh, Ninjutsu cost. So what, what did I just summon? An Eternal Witness. When Eternal Witness enters the battlefield, you may, may return target card from your graveyard to your hand. Ooh, interesting. So I could resummon my Garak's Companion. Ooh, I've got Overrun, which I could use next turn. That's pretty cool. So I can actually play both of these this turn. So let's play my Colonial Tusker. I should say that. I should have waited till after my turn, but uh, I'll, play my, I'll play my Eternal Witness next. So let's swing in with my Colonial Tusker. Maybe he'll, he'll maybe he'll choose to block. I don't know. Will he? Won't he? No, I think he's going to take the three damage. Interesting. And then, I can, then I can play my Eternal Witness, and then I can actually summon. Oh, do I go for Nature's Law or Garrett's Companion? Actually, I might go for Nature's Law because. Uh, uh, yeah, because that, that way I can actually ramp next turn. Even if I don't summon a uh, a land, then that way, that way I can actually summon my rampaging Balfs. Uh, Afterwards, which is pretty cool. As long as I actually need my Garrett's companion right now, I have three creatures here. So he's going to swing with that one. Let me guess, going to going to pay out a ninjutsu cost. What a surprise! Three three, a Kabi Gang Shinobi. So that, that costs four 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 land, I think. And whenever a Kobe Gang Shinobi deals combat damage to a player, that player discards two cards. Oh, that's kind of sucky. So uh, I'm actually going to toss away those two and keep my overrun as my overrun will actually allow me to swing in with all of these cards this turn and he's going to obviously play another Tormented Soul so the, all, my, all my creatures here will gain plus three plus three and trample till the end of the turn which is pretty awesome which I'm actually going to play now it's a sorcery card so we do have to play in my main phase I can't play as an instant unfortunately so I'm going to attack with all these all do have trample so even if he does decide to block with, all, with those two cards I might actually, I think I'm actually going to go in for the kill here because I'll still deal five damage. Yes, and that's the kill. Excellent. See, that's why I tossed those other two cards. I actually planned that ahead there. Did something right for once. Predator Ooze, that sounds cool. Indestructible. Whenever Predator Ooze attacks, put a 1 1 counter on it. Whenever a creature dealt damage by Predator. When, whenever a creature dealt damage by Predator Ooze, this turn dies, put a 1. That is awesome. I am definitely putting that in my. I'm, I'm, I'm going in and putting that in right now. <laughs> before I even think about getting to the next one. I think it's already in. I'm just going to have to choose one to take out. So what do I take out? Um, so I've got 23 land in my deck at the moment. And that's a pretty good card. What do I, what do I really need? Let's have a look through. Um, maybe Master of the Wild Hunt. Don't really need that one. That, that ooze card sounds awesome though. Let's go back into the uh, campaign. Kamagawa. On the far flung yeah, okay, sharp. We've already had that before. So now we're on to the Sword of the Samurai. So this is the this is the uh, Sword of the Samurai deck, uh, which I'll unlock if I beat it. So which deck do I go for? Which one haven't I used in a while? I'm tempted to try Dodge and Burn, but I really want to practice with that one a bit more before actually recording anything with it because I'm not really that all that confident with it. So uh, I'm gonna play with my Guardians of Light in a little while. Quite fancy giving that one a go. I quite like the white decks. My, I think Avacyn's Glory is definitely one of my favourite decks, and I think it's... Uh, so here we go. The Lord of the Samurai Clan stands before you. Behind him looms the fortress where the scale of the white dragon is get jealously guarded. You have travelled far to lose your head, the Samurai says, drawing his sword. 
Interesting. So what have I got here? Two land, Blade of the Six Pride. That only costs two land. I got a uh, Core Spirit Dancer. So Core Spirit Dancer gets plus two, plus two for each aura attached to it. Whenever you cast an aura spell, you may draw a card. That's pretty cool. Got a Seraph of the Sword, which is an angel card. Flying. Uh, prevent all combat damage that would be dealt to Seraph of the Sword. So that's pretty cool. So basically, you can't take any combat damage. Good blocker card. It's only four land. Spirit Mantle. That's only two land as well. So Enchant Creature. Enchanted Creature gets plus one, plus one. That's protection from creatures and i got true conviction creatures you control have double strike and lifelink you know what i'm actually gonna keep this hand it's not a bad hand i mean i've got three fairly powerful cards here none of them all of them require only two lands so uh in three turns i could have some pretty beasty cards out so we, what we got here then devoted retainer bushido one what does bushido do again creature with bushido gets a temporary boost to its power and toughness whenever it blocks or becomes blocked for example when a creature with bushido two blocks becomes blocked it gets plus two plus two until the end of the turn all ah, right so basically there's a one one creature if i block it it becomes a two two creature or if it blocks me it becomes a 2-2 creature interesting so i'm gonna have to play a land well i just summon pacifism enchant creature enchanted creature can't attack or block that's pretty cool so you can put that on like a super powerful creature and then it can't do bugger all and again only requires two lands so if i can just like draw a couple of lands i'm pretty much fine and dandy obviously i can't block that this turn never mind it's not the end of the world so he's gonna hit me for one only gains its Bushido if it blocks or becomes box. Another devoted retainer, so that's another one that with the Bushido one. Ah, here we go. So uh, that's some of my other planes. So I've got a, a Jani Sunstriker 2-2 two -two card with lifelink. That's pretty cool. Um, I actually think I'm going to summon that one because uh, I, like, I like the idea of the lifelink. If I block one of these two, it may get killed off, but I'll gain two health because of it, because of its lifelink, which is quite cool. So... Uh, so you're going to summon another Devoted Retainer. That's pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. So, uh, his turn. Is he going to swing it with two of them? Yeah, I'm going to have to... Uh, I'm going to block one of these bad boys. It may become 2-2. Two -two, may get killed off, but I will gain two health because of it. I can't afford to take like these early combat damages, really. My turn. What's, what's this one then? Lifelink. Enchant creature. Enchanted creature has lifelink. So that's pretty cool. So I could give that one to my core spirit dancer as well, which I'm going to summon. Starts off at 0-2. Not the best, but as soon as I start putting things like spirit mantle and lifelink on it, it's going to become pretty beefy pretty quickly. Maybe I should have started with that one last turn. Hmm. I'm actually going to let these two go through because I'm not actually willing to... Uh, <clears throat> to block with this one. I'm only going to lose two health, so not really the end of the world. I'm down to 18. It's the end of my turn. Ooh, another Core Spirit Dancer. Although, what I'm going to do first is put a Spirit Mantle on, which gain, my Enchanted Creature gains plus one, plus one, and has protection from creatures. Do you want to draw a card? Yes, I would love to draw a card, please. Shame it's not a land. So I've got a Dawn Elemental, and that one becomes a 3-5. Pretty crazy. So I'm actually going to skip my attack for now. I'm going to use it as a blocker next turn for now. So he's going to play a Terramorphic Expanse. Is he going to swing in? Nope, he's decided to skip his attack this turn. And play a Battle Mad Ronin, Bushido 2. Battle Mad Ronin attacks each turn if available. Fair enough, so that one will become a 3-3 three, three if it's blocked or becomes blocked. So he's going to pop his Terramorphic Expanse at the end of his turn. Summon a Red Land, it's the end of his turn. So my turn. Now I am actually going to summon... Where's Lifelink? I actually want to give... So, Enchanted Creature has lifelink, so let's give that to my Core Spirit Dancer, that will become a... Yes, I would like to draw a card. Damn, it's not a land, it's a Dawnstrike Paladin, so that's now a 5-7. Now, do I swing in with this bad boy? So that uh, is a 5-7, or do we use it to block? Um, so what did, what did uh, Spirit Mantle? Uh, Enchant Creature gets plus one plus one as protection for creatures. So, I'm actually going to skip my attack for now, I'm going to wait for him to try and swing in, possibly. You have too many cards, please discard one. Hmm, which one don't I really want? Chant creature gains, plus one, plus two, otherwise it gets minus two. True conviction, hmm. What do I want? I'm thinking my Dawn, 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 Dawn Elemental for now, I think. I have to just toss one, I really could do with the land, ideally. Ronin War Club, a quick creature gets plus two, one. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your card. Fair enough, so that one basically, um, that one has to be equipped to a creature as soon as it enters the battlefield. So he's going to swing in with that one, with all three of them. 
I'm actually going to block that one, my core spirit dancer. So that becomes a 3-3. Three, three. So I'm going to take 2 damage, but I will actually kill that one off. And I get lifelink, so I'm back up to 21 health. Excellent. My turn. Uh, I can actually summon my blade my uh, blade of the six pride big three one card pretty cool i really could do with another land here but uh so i'm actually going to swing in now i've got that one to block with so uh take out one of his cards next turn go start doing some combat damage to him and i do actually get lifelink so i'm up to 26 health it's getting pretty mental already i'm liking the fact that i got lifelink here so what's this then? Yossi the Morning Star, flying. Whenever Yossi the Morning Star dies, target player skips his or her next untapped step. Target up to five, target... Oh, bloody hell. I think I'm going to put pacifism on that one somehow next turn. So it won't be able to do any damage. And that one automatically gets it. Won't be able to swing in with it because it doesn't have haste. I am actually going to take out one of his creatures there. So, uh... It'll, it, 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 um... That one get taken out. He only, uh, my turn. Still nothing really useful, except I'm going to play Pacifism on uh, his Yossi the Morning Star, so it can't actually... Uh, yes, I would like to draw a card. Excellent, a land. That's exactly what I needed. So that one can't actually attack anymore. I can now play a land. My turn. So what, so whenever Yossi the Morning Star... So it can't actually do anything, so I may just attack for now. Can it block? But it's, if it's got Pacifism... Excellent, so I can swing in. I'm up to 30 health. So does pacifism stop it from... Uh, enchanted creature can't attack or block. <laughs> so that creature is just essentially useless on the battlefield now. So, oh, he switched the um, thing to, the, to that one. That's pretty cool. So he's going to swing in with for three. Although that doesn't really matter as I'm up to 30 health right now. So uh, 27 health. Not the end of the world. Excellent. Another land. So I can actually summon... What do I want to summon? I've got Armoured Ascension. Enchanted Creature gets plus one, plus one for each planes you control and has flying. It's pretty cool. I've got uh, Indestructibility. Don't really need that. Sarah's Boom. Enchant Creature gains plus one, plus two as long as it's white. Otherwise... You know what? Let's just go... Let's just go... Ball, let's just go ballsy on this and uh, buff this one. Each. Yes. Just draw another card. <laughs> Eight, eleven. That's mental. So I'm actually going to gain eight, 8 health from this, which is crazy. So I'm, up to, I'm going to be up to 35 health now. And he's down to 2, two health. <laughs> oh my god, I'm actually... This 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 deck is really cool. This, this core spirit dancer is amazing if you can get a few enchantments on it. Core to glory. Untap all creatures you control. Samurai creatures you control gain plus 1, plus 1 at the end of the turn. Why did he do that? Oh right, because he's getting plus 1, plus 1. So it becomes a 4-3. Man, I've got 35 health. Does it really matter? I'm so I'm so glad I bunged all those uh, enchantments on that <laughs> on that core spirit dancer. Oh look another land just to just to finish things off. Um, do I really need to play anything? What have we got here? Angelic Destiny enchantment. You know, just to really take the piss, I'll just give it another enchantment. Yeah, why not? Hell not. Let's draw a card. Can I play a land? No, apparently I've already played a land this turn. So finish up with 14-7 there. Pretty mental. I'm, glad, I'm really glad to save that pacifism, pacifism for that card, because that one card could have caused me a whole world of hurt. So there we go. I've beaten the Sword of the Samurai, and while well, I unlocked Sigil of the Empty Throne. So uh, whenever you cast an enchantment spell, put a 4-4 white angel creature token flying onto the battlefield. That's pretty cool. So uh, I've also unlocked the Swords of the Samurai deck, and I've also become the champion of Kamigawa. So there we go. So with uh, Shugahara, Lord of the Samurai Clan defeated, you enter his fortress and claim the White Dragon Scale for your spell. Excellent. So then all I've got left to do on the campaign is the Lords of Darkness. I've also got... Um, uh, I've, I've unlocked Elspeth, I've unlocked Dodge and Burn, so then all I have left to do on the campaign is literally just to unlock Nys Nyssa Ravain, which is the Elf deck. So uh, I'll probably try and get those two encounters done on my next video. But I'm going to leave the video there for now, everybody. Thanks for watching. As always, please comment my videos. Let me know what I've uh, done well and what I haven't done well. If you enjoyed what I, if you enjoyed what I did, it's always nice to see likes and favourites. Show me you're enjoying what I'm watching. Me, you're enjoying what you're watching. If you're new to my channel, it's always nice to see subscribe to my channel to show me what you want to see more of my content in the future. Again, thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.